Hey guys, my name is Justin. I am a junior mechanical engineer. I'm a rising senior mechanical engineer and I'm a member of Dean's team. Hi everyone, my name is Jessica McDaniel. I'm also a rising senior in biological systems engineering and I'm also part of the Dean's team. So today we're going to take you through some information about the College of Engineering, what it takes, the different majors we have, and some cool opportunities and special things about Virginia Tech's College of Engineering. So what does it take to be an engineer here at Virginia Tech? So creativity is always important. We, as engineers, are going to have to solve problems that don't exist now. So the problems that we are facing now might not be the problems that you're facing when you graduate. And throughout your career, things are going to change and there are going to be new problems that require new solutions and outside the box thinking. Um, additionally, engineering is almost never done in isolation. You're always working with a team, whether that be people in your same skill set, like other engineers in your major, or other people from other teams or from other majors like communications, business, um, stuff like that. So it's important to be able to have the thoughts in your head, be able to communicate them, be able to listen with other, listen to other people and bring all those skill sets together and move forward in a cohesive manner, not fragmented effort. And then third, study habits. So engineering coursework is pretty demanding as engineering coursework is at, at any university. So study habits are going to be really important combined with time management. So that's basically the ability to dedicate yourself to doing something and following through with it and minimizing distractions and make sure that you really retain the material. Like you really, you're not just like writing stuff down like a robot, like you're actually processing and thinking and then you're able to take that knowledge and expand upon it. So in college, the tests aren't going to be, this is what we did for homework. Here's the exact same question with different number. It's going to be like combining different parts of different questions into a whole new thing. If you understand the fundamentals and then you'll be able to do it. So going off that, an interest in math and science is really important. Um, engineering has a lot of math and science. You don't have to absolutely love it. It doesn't have to be your favorite, but you do have to be interested in it. So when, when the math and science gets hard, as it inevitably does, you're able to push through and keep going with it. Um, kind of going off that, challenging high school background is really important. AP classes, IB classes, the dual enrollment classes are going to be more representative of what you going to find in like your freshman year of college and sophomore year of college. So experiencing that rigor, at least a little bit in high school, will better prepare you for the transition to college and really build those study habits and reinforce your abilities in math and science. So this is just the average GPA. This is from the class of 2019. So this is by no means the absolute score that you need to have in order to be admitted into the College of Engineering, but many people ask for an estimate. So this is what the average is. So it's 4.2 out of a 5.0 scale. And if your school doesn't go to up to a 5.0 scale, that's okay. The admissions, they average out all the GPA scores and see what your GPA would have been if it were to be on that scale. Also for the average SAT, the math and reading was a 707 and a 655. We have 20 0.7% female, so that's a little bit below the average. And then the underrepresented minority groups is 29.4%. Yeah, I'll just add on here that sometimes I'll get questions from students and parents alike. They'll be like, oh, my kid has like this and this, or like I have this on the SAT, am I going to get in? And well, I'm not a mission, so I can't answer that. But even if I was, the only way you're definitely not going to get into Virginia Tech is if you don't apply to Virginia Tech. So I would take the opportunity to apply. As you'll see, um, the rest of the presentation, it's absolutely worth it. And it's a great school. So definitely recommend applying. Um, so freshman engineering at Virginia Tech uh, might work a little differently than some of the other schools. We actually come in as a general engineer and the general engineering major, which isn't one of our degree granting majors. So you can't graduate in general engineering. But what it does is that you come in and you have the same classes as all or you have the same curriculum as all the other freshmen entering engineering. So the common entry point in classes, you can scan this QR code or go to this link uh, to find out what it is. But basically, we have two semesters of our foundations of engineering classes, which we'll cover more. Um, basically, that builds a foundation in engineering that you'll need. And then chemistry, physics, calculus, English, stuff like that. Some different ways that your, that your classes can differ from your other classmates is that if you come in with IB, AP, dual enrollment credit, you can get out of some of those classes. So if you took AP English, got the right score to meet the requirement, then you don't have to take English in college. And you can go to this website here, trainguide.register.bt.edu to see a list of all the AP and dual enrollment and IB credits that people have come into Virginia Tech with and gotten credit for. That being said, if you have a class that's not on the list, doesn't mean it doesn't apply, it just means no, one done it, no one's done it before. Just reach out to admissions. They usually want a syllabus and see what you did in the class, and they'll tell you if you can get credit for it or not. Um, some other things, the pathway for general education curriculum is our like general education, like philosophy, sociology, science, 
or stuff like that. So other classes that you can take to round out your engineering education. And then the end of your freshman year, you select your degree granting major. So that's going to be like mechanical engineering, aerospace, the whole list of majors we'll get into later. And if you have a 3.0 at the end of your freshman year, then you automatically guarantee your first choice major. That means that if you want mechanical engineering and you, there's like the, let's say they have a certain number of spots and that number of spots has exceeded mechanical engineering, the mechanical engineering college will, will hire more faculty, expand classes, do what it needs to do to accommodate those students. And this isn't like they're going to cram a bunch of students in a classroom that was only designed to fit half that number. Like the, the colleges usually know how many people are going to come to each school. So they, they have a good idea. And then should you not meet the 3.0 guarantee, uh, the major, if it doesn't fill up in the with the students that have 3.0s, it, it starts going down. So like 2.99, 2.98, uh, stuff like that. And traditionally, some of the bigger majors will fill up just with the students that have 3.0s. That'll change year to year. So the Foundations of Engineering class is a class that we have both in the fall and in the spring. And it's really unique because it teaches you a lot of design and teamwork. It also teaches you all the different disciplines that Virginia Tech has to offer in terms of engineering. And for a grade, you have to go to three different engineering info sessions uh, for the different majors. So you'll go to the one that you obviously like or interested in, but then you have to go to two more just to expand your mind and to see what else is out there. We also learn about different coding algorithms. We use CAD, we use MATLAB, we use SOLIDWORKS and things like that. Graphing as well. And then we also have some problem solving. We have a project that's at the end of the year, I believe in the spring semester. And you basically, there's three different projects. There's one where you make a wind turbine. There's one that's like a drone, airplane. And there's one that's like a a race car, I'm pretty sure. And you make it from scratch, you design everything on the computer, and then print it or 3D print it, however you want to do it, and it comes to life. So it's really cool to see the whole design process from start to finish. And then we also talk about the future of engineering and some of the problems that a student make tackle when they get into the workforce. All right, so here you see the undergraduate enrollment for all our majors. Up at the very top is engineering education, which houses all the freshmen in general engineering. And then below that are all our degree granting majors. So if you take those majors and divide the enrollment number by three, that's about the average class size since there's only sophomores, juniors, and seniors in those, in those majors. The only exception to that is the biomedical engineering, which is one of our newest majors, and they're on a cohort system. So basically you have to get a 3.0 and then you also do, I think you write some application essays and you do an interview and they accept you into that major. Currently the, the class size is 40, but they're going to continue to expand that up and up. And eventually they'll open it up to where you get a 3.0, then you just get in like all our other majors. I don't personally know the timeline for that right now, but definitely our biomedical major is, is new and something a lot of people are interested in. So That is an option for you guys. So now we're going to go over all the disciplines of engineering that we offer, starting with electrical engineering. So with electrical engineers, they have a lot of hands-on projects. They work on electrical systems, electronics, microelectronics, communication systems, controls, a lot of lab-based design projects as well. A lot of the electrical engineers will have like their circuit boards carrying them around working on their projects. And some of the jobs that you can go to in the industry are power and energy, microelectronics and semiconductors, and they're pretty much needed everywhere. So you can be very versatile in what type of career you want to go to with this major. All right, so computer science. So on kind of like on the opposite side of electrical engineering, where it's very hardware-based, computer science is almost entirely software-based. So you're going to be working on the, the software that runs on the computer. That's going to focus a lot on like memory management, like low-level programming. There's some like interface design, UI, UX, stuff like that. So basically what you're doing is you're designing software for computers. And this is one of our majors that does offer a five-year bachelor's, master's program. So basically what you do is you, you take your first three years undergrad, and then your fourth year, your senior year, you basically take some undergrad classes to finish off your undergraduate degree. And you also take some graduate classes in your fourth year, and you finish it off in your fifth year. So in five years, you'll have a master's degree. This is also one of the programs that it's not uncommon to be able to graduate in three years if you come in with some credits. Since there aren't as many prereqs in this major, so you can take, you have more freedom to take classes in the order that you see fit. But yeah, commonly 
common jobs they go into would be like software design development. So a lot of big companies, Facebook, Google, Amazon, will all hire from Virginia Tech. Networking computer security, companies like Oracle, mobile application, game design. Game design development, a lot of big companies there as well. So computer engineering is different from computer science. So what computer engineering focuses on mainly is the computer itself and developing in ways to make the computer faster, smaller, and more compatible for the user. At the bottom right, you'll see that there's this fabric and it's called the smart fabric. So when, say, if someone who was the elderly and they fell and they needed assistance, it would be able to detect the impact of the fall and immediately contact the emergency services so they can get help. So some of the areas of specialization is network, hardware, computer systems, cybersecurity, machine intelligence, and all this stuff. And basically what it's saying is when you graduate from Virginia Tech, you don't just graduate with a degree in computer engineering, for example, you graduate with computer engineering with a focus in cybersecurity. So you're able to also learn the holistic view of the major and also get to hone in on what you're really specifically interested in. So you get the best of both worlds in that aspect. And that goes with all the different majors. So this is biological systems engineering. This is my major. So a lot of people are, they don't know whether to choose civil or environmental or biological systems. So if you're very interested in the environment and the land and water resources and all that stuff, I would really recommend going the biological systems route. And we focus on different things like land and water resource engineering, hydrology, environmental health, and public health. Also bioprocessing, so pre-med, pre-vet, pre-dental are all things you can do with this major. And this was a major a lot of people went to before we had the biomedical major. They do biological systems engineering with a biomedical minor, which is still an option and still a common thing for most students to do. We also touch on stuff like biomolecular processes, biomedical things, food processes, pharmaceuticals, and things like that. A lot of the students go on and have internships and jobs in government agencies, nonprofit organizations, pharmacies, and things like that. So chemical engineering. This is one of the majors that kind of combines a bunch of things. So you have your kind of like college of science, chemistry type of stuff. Uh, you have math, physics, and biochemistry. So what, what chemical engineers usually do is they, they'll they usually get the chemical like formula that you that you need to develop something new and you chemical engineers will figure out how to scale that production. So how do you go from something that you made in the lab in, in a tiny quantity, to be able to make it efficiently and effectively at a much larger scale and be able to distribute that and do the whole process safely with uh, minimal waste and minimal damage to the environment. So a lot of fuels, energy, chemical production, environmental quality and sustainability food health, and then also drugs like pharmaceuticals. This is one of the cool majors that has an international option built into it. So for the summer after their junior year, they take this unit operations lab that can be either done in Blacksburg or there's also options in Denmark and Germany. So you can actually take this lab with a bunch of other of your classmates and it's like a, it's an ongoing program with, within chemical engineering. So common job types like I mentioned before, fuel, chemicals, ceramics, paper, pharmaceuticals, consumer products and consulting is also another big one. So material and science engineering is a very interesting major in my opinion. A lot of the key areas of study are the properties and structure of materials, creating new and better materials and selecting appropriate materials for different applications. So they try to study the science of a material and see where it would apply best. So a lot of the areas of study are metals, polymers, ceramics, nuclear materials, biomaterials, and things like that. They also have a hands-on uh, laboratory, which is in the foundry, which is on the Virginia Tech campus, and you'll see in the top right. So they get to, you know, play with the materials and see what they've been learning in the classroom come to life. In the bottom right, you'll see a football player, and the story with this is that the football player, he injured his arm but if he wore a regular cast, then he'd be classified as a weapon on the field. So they went to the material science engineers to try to figure out a way that he could protect his arm but still play the game. So they whipped up something to put on his arm so it would protect him during the game. And we won. So engineers <laughs> win football games. Right, next is uh, mining and middle engineering. So basically the 
the focus of this is kind of in the name. You try to figure out how to take stuff from the earth that, and do it in a, in a safe and efficient manner. So if you can't synthesize it, if you can't grow it yourself, then it has to be mined from the earth. So like it says here, areas of emphasis, exploration, uh, find these new things, and then evaluation. Like determine if it's like, is, is it worth getting out? Is this like a cost-effective way to do it? Development, so basically creating the mine. Extraction, which is the part of actually taking it out. Then you have to process it. And then after you're done processing, after you've extracted what you need, then you reclaim the land. So basically, there's a big environmental focus here as well, that once you um, extract what you need, then you restore the land and minimize your environmental impact on it. So we are one of the, Virginia Tech is one of a few mining engineering schools, and we're one of the best. Job types are mine scheduling supervision, design, equipment selection, and mineral purification. And this is one of the majors with 100% job placement rate. So civil engineering, it when you look at it online, it'll say civil and environmental engineering, but they focus more on the civil side with emphasis on construction, land development, transportation, geotechnical studies, and structures. If you look on the top right, there's a steel bridge that's one of our one of our design teams that we'll talk about later. And then we also have our smart road, which is what some companies bring their self-driving car on the road that will simulate different weather conditions and see how well the car drives on the road. Next, we have our construction engineering, engineering and management major. So this is a major that was born directly out of industry need. It's a combination of like our civil engineering major, building construction, and also business. So basically, industry, I'd come back to Virginia Tech and say like, hey, we really like your engineers from all three majors, but really what we do out in the field is a combination of all three of those. So could you give us a major like that? So Virginia Tech made one and also one with a very high job placement rate. I wouldn't be surprised if it was 100% as well. Basically, what you do is you're, you learn how to be a project engineer, like a field engineer out in the field directing construction. So engineering with construction and business management combined all together. So this is one of the ones that it's like very industry focused. You What you learn is exactly what you're going to do out in the field. So that's really cool. They get to work with machinery. They have a lot of hands-on experience. And during graduation, they all wear their little hard hats. So I think that's really cool. So aerospace and ocean engineering, this really focuses on the aerodynamics, hydrodynamics, propulsion and flight flight controls and things like that. We also have a wind tunnel and that if you look at the top left, this is a an engine that was given to us and is hanging on the ceiling of Goodwin Hall if you ever get to visit campus. It's also very common and it's very easy to double major in aerospace and ocean engineering. That option is available because a lot of their classes overlap and are very similar. If you look on the bottom left, then we have the weatherman. He went into the wind turbine to try to see if he can sustain a Category 5 hurricane. And he couldn't do it the first time, but he came back and he did it the second time. Uh, so mechanical engineering, this is my major. So like it says here, basically, we apply the principles of motion, energy, heat, and force to design and construct operating machines. So if you really boil it down, basically what we do is we, we figure out how things move and we figure out how to get things to move. So like automotive, uh, robotics, stuff like that. That's a lot of like, uh, like how do we get things to move? And then like power generation, HVAC, stuff like that would be like how to like get things to move. So this is a really broad major. You can come into a lot of different topics like you can see here. In the lower left-hand corner, we have our formal SAE team. That's one of the senior design teams on campus that has students from, from every year working on it. But they basically race a small formula style race car in a competition against schools from all across the country. And I think it's, a, it's one of the majors that has really cool opportunities to work hands-on. Pretty much every design team on campus will have at least one mechanical engineer, if not the majority of the team be mechanical engineers. And aside from that, you can go into all sorts of things, all sorts of types of research that will require mechanical engineering. Biomedical engineering, our brand new major, it produces the inter interdisciplinary engineers who solve different complexes. So it's a mixture of biological systems, chemistry, medicine, physics, and engineering. So it's a lot of different things in one major. It's very popular. Some of the areas of interest are biomedical devices, and imaging, biomechanics, biomaterials, neuroengineering, and a bunch of things like that. We have a lot of research in this field as well. Industrial systems engineering, this is a really cool major that kind of combines two parts. So the industrial engineering part of it would be like kind of like manufacturing. So how to get a process to be done more efficiently. So 
after you're making in part for a while, then you might run some issues with quality or run some issues with tolerances. So how to like re uh, remedy those issues and make parts more cost effectively. And the systems engineering side is how to manage like people and operations. So if you think of a big shipping company like USPS or FedEx, they're moving a lot of packages from all across the country, all across the world. And you have to do this cost efficiently and also really quickly. So when you have Amazon Prime, you get two-day delivery. That package has to end up like at your house within two days through a whole network. And also that has to be cost efficient so that the price is from, uh, doesn't go too high. So system engineers will also focus on how to get that system to work well together. And the, the similarity in both the industrial and systems part is that it's like you're optimizing a process, whether that be a process of machineries as it is in manufacturing, industrial side of things, or systems with, which will be like people, how to get people to move effectively and work together effectively. They commonly go into like consulting, working with other companies to try to optimize their processes. A lot of industries will need them like healthcare, transportation, manufacturing cost analysis. So for more information about each of the majors and each of our of our majors have their own web page, you can Google Explore Engineering at Virginia Tech and they'll all pop up. So if you want to contact any of the faculty or advisor for more information, their information is on their department website. So we have a bunch of engineering minors that you see listed here. Some of them complement engineering majors like computer science and others are more focused parts of majors like green engineering is a really big environmental focus. That being said, you don't have to have, if you choose to have a minor, you don't have to have one in engineering. My minor is in industrial design, which is part of the College of Architecture and Urban Studies, but it's a, it's a really cool thing. Even if you don't see something interested here in the minor list or in, in other minors, it doesn't mean that like you can't concentrate in it. So personally, I'm a mechanical engineer, but I have an automotive focus and there's no automotive minor from Virginia Tech, but there's a bunch of automotive classes and there's automotive design teams that you can join. So when you talk to a recruiter, you're, you're like marketing yourself. You don't have to like have like the, the I'm an automotive minors tank for them to believe you. You can tell them about the classes you've taken, tell them about the experience that you had, whether that be personal projects or research on campus or design teams on campus. That's all good. So we also have a bunch of study abroad programs. Most of the majors have their own. And there's also the Rising Sophomore Abroad Program, which we'll get into. Undergraduate research, Virginia Tech is a massive research institution. One of the things I really like about Virginia Tech's research is that professors actually want to reach out to you when you just come to the university as like a freshman or as a sophomore. Because what they can do is they can teach you what you need to know, really invest time into you, and then when you become an upperclassman, I've been working at the lab for a while, then you can teach the next group of incoming students into the lab. A lot of times, I, I definitely felt this when I came to college, is like, oh, when you participate in research, you have to like know everything already. Like you, you're supposed to have like an understanding of what you're doing. But that's what research is, right? Like you, you're, you're exploring something new that, that's never been done before. So it's okay if you don't have all the experience. If you have a passion to learn, you're willing to learn, then that's something that you can reach out to professors about. I definitely came in freshman year working on a robotics project, having never done robotics in my life. I just thought it was cool. And I expressed interest to the professor and I learned a lot from that experience in that lab. And then finally, we have a bunch of engineer professional societies and organizations. So each major will have its own, usually honor society. And then we also have a bunch of other ones like SA, uh, SAIS, NSBE, SHIP, SWE, all those cater to different groups within engineering and are really great groups to join. So the question, will the students learn about the different areas in detail during introductory engineering courses? In the curriculum, at least when I took it, there isn't like a day or a week about every single major, but what is required that you go to three information sessions held by each major. And you can go to more, you can go all of them if you want. So basically someone from, usually the advisors from that major will come and present, give you a really in-depth explanation about the major itself. What's also cool about our, our first year program is that since you're not, you haven't declared a major yet, you can talk to upperclassmen and see what their major is about. And then we do have an engineering living learning community that you can participate as a freshman. And there are being sophomores there that will be your mentors and you can ask them about like what they're doing, what it's like, where, where they expect to go in the future. So that's, there's definitely an opportunity to learn more as a freshman. So this is just a map of the types of internships and co-op experiences that the Dean's team has had. The Dean's team is about 50 students. So if we showed the internships all around from the College of Engineering, we wouldn't be able to see the map in some parts of the globe. We get internships in the States and internationally, and a lot of big name companies, as you can see, hire our students. So an internship is usually about 10 to 12 weeks over the summer, and they pay 
really well and you get the real in-person experience and it's not like, oh, go grab my coffee. They actually like put you on a team. They sometimes give you a mentor who's an employee at the company and they really just treat you like you are one of the employees. And if you do a good job, they usually ask you to come back next summer. And sometimes if you keep going back over the summer, then it'll end up in a full-time hire when you graduate. Co-ops are similar, but the only thing with co-ops is they last a little bit longer. They go on terms. So for example, you can go on a summer term, which would be the summer to the fall. And then you can go on a winter term, which would be probably like January to the middle of the summer. So that really means that you wouldn't miss a semester of class, but all your stuff is held. So like your scholarships are held. And when you leave, so for example, if you leave your sophomore year in the fall, you'll come back and then you'll be a spring sophomore. And it's very um, highly encouraged for students to take advantage of co-op opportunities and experiences. And this is another reason why a lot of people maybe say, oh, I'm a fifth year senior is because maybe they took a semester off uh, to do a co-op. So I'm personally a fifth year senior. I took two semesters off in a row, like all together. So I just wasn't at school for a whole year. And uh, I worked in Boston at this company, a jet engine company called GE Aviation. It was a great experience. I really liked it. I think one of the best things about that experience is that you you go there and you learn about all the different things. You see all the different engineers working together. You see the whole system and come back and that gives you a greater sense of direction on where you want to go. It also like really focuses you on your, on your classes. Like when you learn something, you're like, yes, like this is like, this guy used it. He was really smart. Like, I want to know more about that. And it really concentrates you and gives you motivation in your classes. One note is that like, I didn't pay tuition during the year that I was gone. So if you're, if you're a fifth year senior and you, it's because you took a co-op, that doesn't mean that you like paid 10 semesters worth of tuition. Like I, I paid a very, like, I think it was $75 fee per semester to just like keep my, keep my like status as a student. And then also the GE paid me very well. And it was it was definitely nice to have that money uh, after working one year. Another thing, co-ops and internships are not required by Virginia Tech, but the feedback that we've gotten from our graduating students is that like a lot of them wish they had more internship and co-op experience. So it's definitely something I recommend. So a little more about that, the career fairs that we have, we have one really big one called Engineer Expo in the fall. And that's where a lot of the engineering students will get hired. Companies from all across the country, usually in the range of like 250, 300 companies will come to Virginia Tech over a span of like two to three days and hire Virginia Tech students. So what's really cool is that you can see here in the upper left-hand side, the person wearing the maroon shirt is a GE recruiter. She was actually the one that hired me, but she's also a former Virginia Tech alumni. So that, that's very common across all the recruiters that they'll be from Virginia Tech. And it's nice to be able to have that instant connection of being a Hokie. In addition to that, like you can tell them about the classes that you've taken, the design teams you've worked on, the places that you work on campus, and they understand, like they get it, they've been there, they've gone through the same thing as you have. Uh, when you tell them about that one class you took with that one professor, like, yeah, man, like that was really hard. Like, I, I feel you. Or like, yeah, that was a really great professor. I really enjoyed learning from them. So we on the going going around the clock. We have the STEP program, which is the Summer Transition Engineering Program. And basically what that is, is it after you get accepted to Virginia Tech and it's the summer before your freshman year, you basically take the first six weeks of what would be your freshman year. So you take, you take the first six weeks of chemistry and you go all the way up to the first test. So you learn all the intro stuff and then you take the test. That really helps you build your study skills and transition you from high school into college. And this is popular for, for high schools that might be smaller, transitioning into like a large college environment. Cool thing about this is that like none of the grades count. So if you if you had a rough time transitioning and you uh, didn't do so well in the first test, it, it doesn't count for anything. And then when you take it for real, you've already learned all the material. So you can take the first six weeks of school and, and then really focus on your transition and, and it'll be like a burden off your shoulders. And then we also have the Hypatia and Galileo program, which will commonly be referred to as Galapatia. That is a living learning community for engineering that is housed, like basically you live in a dorm with all, all other engineers in that program. In addition to the freshmen, there's also upperclassmen who live, who also live in the dorm, will serve as your mentors as your committee members. And basically what they do the mentors will be there for the first 10 weeks, having weekly meetings with you guys and like checking in on you, making sure that you transitioning well. And they're also there for all the other written questions. So I remember asking my mentor, like how to get stuff shipped, like 
how to like write the address for my for my dorm and my room number. But they're there, they can tell you like where to eat on campus, what are good times that aren't busy, shortcuts around campus, how to get places, good teachers to have, good classes to take, their favorite foods, cool sports, cool activities that you can be participate in. And it's cool because they're living in the same, like they live like a door or two down from you. So they're right there available for you whenever you need. Even after that like 10 week mentoring program is the mentoring like Time is over, they're going to be there for the whole year. So it's a great resource to have. As you can see in this picture, there's also a design studio on the second floor, which has laser cutters, a CNC, 3D printers, power tools, and just like workstations. So you can take your personal projects and work on them there. Or the, the foundations engineering class that we mentioned before has a project component. So it's really nice to be able to just go from your room down the stairs and be able to work on that project right in your own dorm without having to leave the comfort of your dorm have to go outside and cross campus to work in the Firth Engineering Lab, which is where most, most freshmen do their, do their design stuff. Now above it, we have this peer, peer mentoring group, which is basically the same thing as the Gallopation mentors, except you don't live in Lee Hall, but they're there for the first 10 weeks to meet with you. And it's kind of the same experience. It's something that I definitely recommend. Having a mentor, both academically and professionally, is something that I find is really good for development. And it's, it's a good connection to have. This is hands-on, minds-on. So that's like Virginia Tech's motto for when students learn what they want to learn in the classroom and they actually get to apply it in real life. So these are just some of our design teams. We have Astrobotics. We have Concrete Canoe, Design, Build, Fly, Formula, SAE, Hyperloop, and Steel Bridge. And those are just to name a few. There's a bunch more. And if you ever get to visit campus, they're all housed in the Wear Lab. And the students get to come together and really work on their passions and they get to go into competitions with them and things like that. A lot of their vehicles and parts get donated. They may be by a certain company. And this is really good for like seniors and juniors when they go in and they, you know, go to their career fairs and things like that. They can talk about their design project and the company that they may be talking to may be sponsoring that project so they know exactly what they're working on. For example, that the bottom left, you have the concrete canoe, which is my favorite one to talk about because it's a it's actually a concrete made out of canoe. I mean, it's a canoe made actually out of concrete and it floats and they race in it and all that stuff and they paint it. And I think it's just super cool. I'm on the uh, hybrid electric vehicle team, which is one of our cars is the white Camaro that you see in the uh, bottom right hand corner. And what's really cool about that, it's, it's sponsored by General Motors, which makes the Chevrolet Camaro. Also MathWorks, which makes MATLAB, which is a really big programming tool that we use, and also Department of Energy. So I think, I want to say like half of our graduating seniors were hired by General Motors. So like, it's a really great opportunity to be able to network with that company. And you're doing exactly like what they do. Like, this isn't some kind of like, oh, let's like network with some college students and like give them a fun project. Like we're making a hybridized and currently we're making a hybridized and semi-autonomous vehicle in the same way that GM engineers are doing it. Like they, they take what we learn and what we develop, the technology that we develop, and they put it into their vehicles. So this is, this is exactly what you'd be doing. And that, that reflects really well on, on the companies you hire. Like personally, I'll all be working for Ford this summer doing exactly what I'm doing on the design team. So it transitions really well and I'll be learning a lot more in industry as well. It was a really cool experience. And I think one of the biggest parts about it, Virginia Tech Engineering is that we're very industry focused. Like we have a lot of communication with industry. We have a lot of alumni that come back and talk to us. And a lot of our efforts are focused towards industry. So when you graduate, it's not just you, you know how to read a textbook and recite equations out of a book or out of equation sheet. You actually know how to solve problems and work beyond what you learn just in the classroom. You know how to work hands-on and uh, develop the future of engineering. So Virginia Tech engineering rankings were ranked 13 best undergraduate programs for engineering and 31, I think it's actually 29 now, best graduate programs. In general, Virginia Tech always ranks really highly in engineering, we are, our academic programs are really strong. Some other ones I'd like to highlight is uh, we're number one in campus, or in students who love their love being on campus. That really reflects when you like walk around campus, you see like everyone's happy. I think it's something that I hadn't considered as much when I was applying to school. I was definitely looking at the engineering rankings, like, all right, I want to go to like the best engineering school out there. But if you're going to be here for four years, or in my case, five years, then it's really important that you find a place that you feel like is home and you feel like that you can enjoy, right? Because like you might be studying for, for a good chunk of your day, but like you, you're also a person, you 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 have a social life and you want to enjoy being with your friends and being on campus and all the, all the college experience has to offer. So I think it's also important to 
to have a campus that you like. And going along with that, I think we're ranked number four or three in, in foods with, or campuses with the best food. I think above us is some like culinary school, so I'm not mad about it, but Virginia Tech food is phenomenal. I not be on campus now, I really, really miss campus food. And even on breaks, when I'm like at home for winter break, like I'll miss like going to campus for food, which is like not something I ever thought would happen, like being in high school and eating high school lunches. Like I absolutely abhorred that. But Virginia Tech food is really great. I would recommend that you guys uh, look up VT Dining on Google Images and look at some of the photos. They're very representative and the food is delicious. So some of the outcomes that we have is freshmen who continued their second year in engineering for the last five years. We've averaged around 90%. This is also called retention rate. So if you're looking at other schools, please pay attention to this number because it's super important. If you are in um, Hypatia and Galileo or Galpatia, then that number jumps to almost 99% of students returning their second year. So after graduation for the class of 2019, 74% of students were employed and 13% plan to attend graduate school or have already accepted their admission. This doesn't go up to 100 because the rest of the percentage of students did not reply to the survey. The survey sent out after they graduate. So the median starting salary for engineering is 70,000 for the class of 2019. And this can also vary um, depending on what major you decide to pursue. We have a bunch of scholarships listed for freshman year. They have important leadership scholarship, the patent engineering scholarship. There's other financial aid. We also have the Leo A. Pattis scholarship for people who are transition or, uh, transferring from the Virginia Community College system. It's not uncommon to get more of your financial aid starting when you declare your major because a lot of our donors will give back to the major that they were in and not just to the whole college of engineering itself. So a lot of the money starts rolling in uh, once you become a sophomore. There is just one application for all those scholarships once you're in your major. So it's it's cool that you just have to write one essay and you're considered for all the, like for me, all the mechanical engineering scholarships and then all the college of engineering scholarships in addition to the FAFSA. Like I said, a lot of the money starts rolling in your sophomore year. So don't be too disappointed if if you don't get as much as you hope for freshman year. Another anecdote I like to throw in is that like, I remember like applying to Virginia or getting accepted to Virginia Tech and declaring my intention to go there. And like at some point during the summer, I got this like random email from someone who said they were from Virginia Tech saying that I got a scholarship. And I definitely like 100% thought it was a scam because like I didn't apply for anything at the time. But no, it was real. It was legit. And I checked it out. And when I got the money when I came here, but it was just like another Hokie alumni from my area that wanted to, to give back to his own personal community. And I think that's one of the really cool things about Virginia Tech is that our alumni network is so strong and that like Hokies want to help Hokies. And that whether that's going to be in financial aid or like at Engineering Expo, hiring other Hokies. The, the alumni network is really strong. And also one of the things I hadn't considered when coming, when applying to colleges, but something that I think is really important now having been here. Our alumni network is really strong. One of the great things about Virginia So these are some of the computer guidelines and requirements. First off, I just highly recommend that you don't go and buy a new laptop before, at least wait until the summer before you're going to enter because The requirements that we have for the computers can change and they're usually set about March for every year. So if you buy your computer through the bookstore, there's special pricing and a warranty through the bookstore. So if you break it or if you pour your coffee on it or something happens to it, then you can give it to the VT SWAT team and they'll go check out your computer. You'll send it in to to them and they'll give you a loaner computer so that you can still upload your homework and do everything you need to do because almost all of our homework is submitted online and a laptop is absolutely necessary. They also have special pricing, so it may be more expensive to buy through the bookstore, but you get that warranty and they also have pricing plans so that you don't have to pay all up one fr- up front. You can pay monthly until it's paid off. Some of the bits of the tablets that we require are digital inking for taking notes. A lot of students like taking notes on their computer, drawing and diagrams, writing equations and things like that, and then the most important submitting and grading homework. And a lot of the first part of the engineering courses will be using different coding softwares and other softwares that require a lot from a computer. So it's very important that you make sure that it has the specifications that it needs. Some nuances that we've changed recently. We used to require that you have a 2-on-1 tablet and now it's just recommended. So if you just want a regular laptop that doesn't have any writing capabilities or whatnot, that's okay. But like Jessica said, like, a lot of our, a lot of what we study doesn't fit well in just like typing normal notes. You can't really type 
an integral effectively on a, on a keyboard. So if you want to take your notes digitally, then I'd definitely recommend a tablet. Another thing is that you, if you break your computer and you have it warranty and you ship it off, the SWAT office will give you a loaner regardless of where you bought it. So you don't have to buy it from the bookstore. And this is just for engineering. So if you buy it from, let's say, if you buy it from like Dell itself and you warranty it through Dell and you send it in, the SWAT office will give you a loaner for as long as it takes to get that fixed. So wrapping it up, why did I come to the College of Engineering and Virginia Tech? I remember coming here and, and touring the Wear Lab, which is where a lot of our senior design, design teams are, and then also touring Galapatia's design studio in the, in the second floor, like, like you saw in that photo. I think what really got to me is that there was a lot of focus on hands-on learning here at Virginia Tech. Like I already knew that the academics were really good just from all the rankings, all, everything I've heard, but to be able to work hands-on and, and do the type of thing you would do in industry, I think that was really cool because there's a lot of stuff that you learn, but personally, I find I learn best when I'm like doing it. Like I have my hands on something or I'm typing in my code and I get to test it and develop it. And work through all the things that you, you might not expect and, and be able to find new things and push the envelope and advance like the state of the art. So a lot of cool things that we do here and to be a part of it, I think is, is a really great experience. That being said, I think having been here, what I wish I considered more when I, when I was applying to colleges is like how much like the campus feels like somewhere you want to be. I wasn't really one for, for school spirit back in high school, but having been on been at Virginia Tech for, for three years now, I think that's something that I think is underrated. Like having having a community of people who want to help you and are there for you, I think it's really cool. So there's been a lot of times where I'll struggle with homework or struggle with like a project or just like like having like a rough time. But it, it's good to have that support network and you really feel Virginia Tech. Like people want to help you. They're not there like I'll compete you or I'll do you. Like they want to see everyone succeed from the students to the, the faculty, the professors to your advisors. They all want to be there for you. So I think that's something really important that that is uh, important to consider. Yeah, to second what Justin say, said for the most part, um, I feel the same way. I feel a strong sense of community being here at Tech, and I'm from North Carolina, so for me, it was in between here and North NC State, so I was like, let me go to Virginia Tech. They offer a lot more in terms of support and community, and they had this program, or they still have the program. It's called uh, Women women's preview weekend so all the females who get accepted into the college of engineering get to go spend the night or spend the weekend at lee hall which is the galpatia dorm that we were talking about before and i really got to see firsthand like what campus was like on a normal academic you know weekend and you know not everyone just putting up a smile because it's orientation time like these people actually generally enjoy being here and wanted to see you be here and succeed and things like that. And I really just found a community right away when I got here and everyone is just so happy and just so helpful. It's something, it's something that just rubs off on everybody and everyone has that same happy attitude. And that's what, it's one of the things that I love about Virginia Tech. But I know, I know we talked a lot about like school spirit and whatnot. And I remember like not really understanding like how tangible that was. And it's not like something they can really rank or like survey people like oh like how like how supportive do you think the campus is or whatnot it's something that i've definitely felt in the environment i think i guess it's hard you, know, you kind of had to take our word for it but it's something that i didn't i didn't feel in the other like 10 schools i toured which is like a ridiculous number don't don't tour 10 schools <laughs> <laughs> one common thing i like to say is like i i didn't go to any football games in high school and i wasn't really like a big football fan virginia tech is really big in football and all my friends wanted to go and i think like being in Lane Stadium, which is our football stadium. And one of our traditions is that when the football players come out, we play Enter Sandman by Metallica and everyone's jumping. So you have like an entire stadium full of students like jumping up and down. And it's like one of the most electric, like most like thrilling experiences you can have. And is this isn't like a one-time thing. This is like every football, every home football game. So it's like a really great experience. Like I think we like showed up on the Richter scale, like like the local seismograph people were like, there is an earthquake at Lane Stadium because like that's how much we were jumping. So it really goes to show like how how much of a connection like students have with each other and like that sense of community. So we have one question, any idea of when actual campus tours will be available? I do not know. It might not be for a little bit given the whole, whole pandemic type of thing, but there are a lot of uh, like digital alternatives to that. I know the Word Lab 
just put out a virtual virtual like lab tour in which you can go around and you see all, all, all the different design teams that we have and the advisors will talk through their programs. And, and we're starting to transition back on campus for the fall semester. So expect to see some, some more stuff as we, as we move towards being fully in person again. If there are any other questions, I think we'll call to wrap. Thanks guys, thanks for joining us. Thank you.